Sirius XM's Classic Vinyl gives thanks for decades of complex, thought-provoking, progressive rock from Canada's own Russia. Hey, I'm taking over Classic Vinyl on Sirius XM. This is Getty Lee from the band Rush. We've been blessed to have such great fans and an amazing career, highlighted by the induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland and the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. But we're not done yet. We've just released a new live CD and DVD, Clockwork Angels Tour, a Vapor Trails remixed album, and a seven-disc box set, the studio albums from 1989 to 2007. Some people consider us to be one of the bands that helped create a progressive rock sound. It still inspires other bands today. I want to share 10 artists that influenced me early in my career. I'm Rush's Getty Lee, and these are my classic vinyl influences. Well, the very first band that comes to mind is the first band that made me want to pick up a guitar, and that's the Yardbirds. And there was a song called For Your Love. It's the first song I ever learned on six-string guitar. My next-door neighbor had this magnificent acoustic guitar with palm trees painted on it, sort of a Hawaiian motif. And I begged my mother to let me buy it. I think it was like $30 or something like that. It was the first guitar I ever owned, and For Your Love was the first Yardbird song I ever learned, and I was a huge Yardbird fan at that time. The Thanksgiving Treat, the songs that influenced a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. The next band that really started to get me interested in playing more was a band called John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. John Mayle was this kind of legendary English blues rock figure that always was known for having amazing guitar players. All these guys, Eric Clapton, they all went through the kind of John Mayle school of blues guitar rock. There's one song in particular I remember, I think Mick Taylor played on it actually. It was called Driving Sideways. And it was just one of those things that all the musicians in my little group in the north suburbs of Toronto, Canada, we were into this kind of English blues rock scene. Give thanks for a Hall of Famer. It's classic vinyl influences with Rush's Getty Lee. A band from San Francisco, Jefferson Airplane. Mostly I love them because Jack Cassidy was one of the first bass players that really got me, that really inspired me. He had an unusual tone and an unusual way of playing. You know, he dared to add treble to his bass sound and have a little distortion. It wasn't that I loved the Jefferson Airplane's music so much, but I really loved his bass playing a lot, so he was a big influence. Classic Vinyl gives thanks to a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. Cream sort of changed my life. They blew my mind, and I remember they were coming to Toronto. I couldn't get any of my friends interested to go see them. They were playing at Massey Hall. And I went down, bought a ticket, and I went by myself. I just had to see them. They were such an important band to me. Jack Bruce's bass playing was just out of this world. Eric Clapton, Ginger Bay. I mean, they were the ultimate trio, the most influential band on my entire career in many ways. The day I bought the ticket, I was walking through a department store because it was chilly out on all the televisions in the TV department were the shots of Robert Kennedy. It was the day Robert Kennedy was shot, so it's another thing that I'll sadly never forget. But Cream were a really important band to me. They were incredible to see them live way back in the day. Classic Vinyl gives thanks to a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. 
a good friend of mine introduced me to a band called Yes and an album called A Time and a Word. The music was really complicated and unusual and sort of classically influenced in a sense. And the bass player had an unbelievable tone, kind of aggressive tone. And he played this Rickenbacker bass. And I thought it was just the coolest looking bass. And I sort of dreamed of one day being able to have a Rickenbacker bass. I became a fanatical Yes fan, went to all their shows when they came to town. I think they're the only band I waited all night in line to get tickets for. And I saw them both in Toronto and in this little town north of Toronto called Kitchener. They kind of inspired me to want to make music that was not easy to play. Classic Vinyl gives thanks to a rock and roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. I got very deep into prog rock or the prog rock of the time and I became a big fan of Jethro Tull. Still to this day, I think one of the best concerts I ever saw in my life was Jethro Tull on the Thick as a Brick tour. What an album. When I hear that album every once in a while on the radio or a snippet of it, it really brings back that show and that period of time when it was so great. All these bands were coming over that did challenging music and really forced you to listen to these songs over and over and over again to try to understand what they were trying to do. To me, that was just incredible, challenging stuff, inspiring stuff. And they were one of my faves back then. Classic Vinyl gives thanks to a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. When Led Zeppelin came out, I was already playing in a band with John Rutsey and Alex. I remember the day the first Led Zeppelin record came out. John brought it over to my house and we sat in my bedroom and we put this record on and we just couldn't believe the sound we were hearing. It was bluesy, but it was progressive, heavy. You know, the term heavy didn't really exist back then in terms of characterizing rock music. It had this power behind it that was not volume. It was a power that was weight. The chord structure and the impact had weight. We got tickets and we waited out in the wee hours of the morning and they were playing a place called the Masonic Temple only holds about 1200 people max and we got into the second row and i remember when they came out on stage they started with a song called train kept a rolling which is an old kind of blues standard wow they literally tore the house down because there were bits of plaster falling from the ceiling that night to young guys young musicians that was just kind of a magical night and one of my favorite concert memories too It's a Thanksgiving treat. The songs that influenced a rock and roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. I think most rock bands today wouldn't sound the way they sound without The Who. The Who were, I think, one of the most important bands ever to come out of England. Certainly in my career, the most influential in terms of songwriting. Peter Townsend still my absolute favorite rock songwriter and most influential in terms of what a great rock song should be. I got to see them a couple of times when I was younger. Roger Daltrey aside, it's a three-piece band really. Bass, drums, guitar, and vocals. Love that band. Classic Vinyl gives thanks to a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. Pink Floyd, I remember seeing them in Toronto. And I think Dark Side of the Moon was just coming out or hadn't come out yet. I think the first set they played echoes from the previous album. You know, it's like a 20 minute extravaganza. And they were impressive also to a young musician, not just because of their song structure and the, and the atmosphere, but the fact that they really put on an amazing show. They really understood showmanship. It's 
a Thanksgiving treat. The songs that influenced a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame career. This is Classic Vinyl Influences with Rush's Getty Lee. I got into Genesis early through a friend of mine who turned me on to them. Right around the time they were doing Nursery Crime and the Musical Box, those early Genesis records. Much more than the later records for me, those early ones were amazing because they were concept albums and they were so intricate and they had beautiful moments, complex moments. Peter Gabriel's voice and his sense of showmanship. And I remember when they came to Toronto to play the first time they were opening for Lou Reed, if you can believe that. All these massive Genesis fans came to the show and they far outnumbered the Lee Reed fans at that show. And the show was late and I don't even think all their gear arrived. Their light show didn't arrive in time. So they came on stage and they played their set and they were still blown away to hear. Uh, I think they opened with Watcher of the Skies. After their set, we all left. <laughs> Poor Lou Reed had to come in while people were basically leaving. We felt bad for him, but it was just a strange mismatch. I'm Getty Lee from Rush. Those were 10 of the bands that helped shape my career. I hope you've enjoyed my classic vinyl influences. Pick up our new live CD and DVD, Clockwork Angels Tour, Vapor Trails Remixed, and the seven disc box set studio albums from 1989 to 2007, apparently available now. Thanks for listening. Hear classic vinyl influences with Getty Lee again. On course tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on Sirius XM's Classic Vinyl.